President Joe Biden's decision to break the recent tradition of sitting for an interview with the news network broadcasting the Super Bowl after a series of discussions between Fox and White House officials fell through. This is according to NBC News. However, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre tweeted this. The president was looking forward to an interview with Vox to discuss the Super Bowl, the State of the Union, and critical issues impacting everyday lives of black Americans. We've been informed that Fox Corp has asked for the interview to be canceled. CNN senior media reporter Oliver Darcy spoke with the network's anchor Jim Acosta on the matter. Let's watch. President, this current president doesn't want to do it. Maybe future presidents won't want to do it. Yeah, Jim, I think this really underscores um, the level of commitment uh, Biden has showed to icing out Fox. As you, as you said, he hasn't granted uh, this right-wing talk channel uh, any interviews since he's been president. And you can imagine why. I mean, if you watch this channel, it, it's very clear there's a, there's a strong animus toward him, toward his administration. And at nighttime, you have extremists, people like Tucker Carlson, who are going on, on these rants, who are spreading misinformation and conspiracy theories about uh, things from the vaccines to January 6th. And so I think for this president, he has decided, you know, he's not going to call out the channel. He's not going to go to war with it in that way, but he's not going to give it any credence by appearing on. That's true. And I mean, one of the things that you have to think about is whether or not, um, you know, this battle is worth it. I mean, a lot of people just want to watch football. Yeah, a lot of people want to watch football. But, you know, I mean, a lot of people do turn into tune into this game. So it is a big platform that he is effectively giving up by not appearing on Fox. You know, um, the Super Bowl this year, people are expecting maybe for over 100 million viewers to tune into the Super Bowl. And so by not appearing, he is giving up that platform. But I, I think his administration, and he has decided that he just doesn't want to, um, he just does not want to appear on this channel that is really um, profits off of spreading misinformation and lies uh, about his his administration. Hmm. I, I like how it, at first uh, Oliver Darcy there makes it sound like, well, this is some fringe channel, you know, pet peddling, what was it, misinformation, extremist, right wing talk channel, extremist. And then later has to concede with a ton of people watching, way more people than watching the network that he's on. Uh, you know, he's, he's calling out Tucker by name. But Tucker, uh, uh, The Five, Gutfeld, all have massive ratings. You know, the most watched uh, programs of these natures. Gutfeld, actually, uh, did you catch that, Bacha? Gutfeld advertised during the Super Bowl. I saw a very quick, it was a pretty f funny commercial making a joke about how, how, um, how much money these commercials cost and how short they have to be. But uh, our friend Kat Timf uh, got an appearance, Tyrus got an appearance, so that was interesting to see. Yes, I was aware of that because I was on Gutfeld's show last week and they played uh, the short clip. I thought it was pretty funny as well. There's so much envy and jealousy for Fox News from the other networks because Fox is crushing it in terms of ratings. And the reason they're crushing it in terms of ratings is A, because they're giving people what they want and B, because the other networks are so terrible. <laughs> so it's, you know, there's I, I just I, you can't believe anything you hear about it because there's just it's just so colored by, you know, envy. At, at the same time, it is absolutely disappointing that the president gave up this opportunity to speak to millions and millions and millions of Americans. We know that Tucker Carlson is the most watched show on cable news, not just by Republicans, but by Democrats. You know, there, there's just this is a huge audience. And for the president to stonewall like th them like that, it just puts the lie to his claim to represent unity because he really does think he paints the entire Republican Party with an extremist brush. They feel it. They sense it. And whenever he starts talking about unity, that's what they hear. The president who won't sit down with the only network that would actually give him a difficult interview. He finally sat down with PBS, but the interview was just, I mean, the questions themselves just set him up in the most gentle way. Now, it's a very difficult task. You know, the interviewer got 15 minutes. It, when you get such a short time, you're constantly having to choose between asking follow-up questions and getting to the next question. It's an agonizing choice, as you know, Robbie. You know, as journalists, we're constantly making those decisions. I, but 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 it was just the softness, the soft falling. And honestly, Robbie, I don't even know that I would be able to do better because it's very hard to sit opposite a senior who's, um, you know, searching for words, fluffing 
lobbying words and give them a hard time. I mean, it, it, it's just hard. You have to overcome that as mm-hmm. a journalist dealing with a president who's struggling with the things President Biden is struggling with. And yeah. that's why it's so important that Fox News exists and that they be given the opportunity to interview him because they would be able to do it. And I, I just have to say one more thing. The, the, the Biden administration trying to set up an interview with this tiny Fox soul, you know, in the hopes of getting a black interviewer banking on the idea that like that's how they would get the softball interview while still claiming to be on Fox. (laughs) It's just disgusting the way that they the way they weaponize race against Americans. It's just it really is appalling. You know, it's just it's just disgusting. I really was disgusted to see all that. and, And no one was saying that, like, Joe Biden has to be interviewed by Tucker Carlson, be interviewed by Rick Baer. He can be interviewed by Martha McCallum. He can be interviewed by Dana Perino. There are all sorts of uh, totally people on on the network. Pick one. But uh, of course he didn't. Meanwhile, President Trump blasted Rihanna's performance as a, quote, (laughs) epic fail. Writing on True Social, Rihanna gave without question the single worst halftime show in Super Bowl history. This after insulting far more than half of our nation, which is already in serious decline with her foul and insulting language. Um, Not for the first time. I am way apart from Donald Trump on this. I thought it was a great performance. I'm already a fan of Rihanna. I grew up liking her music, so I was prepared to like it. Um, I actually thought, you know, from from a conservative standpoint, actually, it was it was kind of a it was kind of a tame performance. It wasn't particularly risque. And, and, and I'm, I'm saying that in a, in a, in a positive way. I, I don't think there was much to complain about. It was a, it was a respectful performance. Um, she was revealing, I, I think, that she was, was pregnant. And it was kind of nice and respectful of that. And, uh, and I enjoyed it. And so did most people you know, all across the political spectrum that I talked to. So I think Trump might be a little out of step with the culture on this one. What did you think, <laughs> Bacha? Yeah, it's almost like he wrote that tweet before the performance. <clears throat> I I think one of my <clears throat> excuse me, one of my most conservative um, points of view is um, when I see a woman who is a millionaire, a billionaire, um, still um, engaging in an art form that is extremely sexualizing. Because you would think the point of becoming a millionaire or a billionaire is to no longer have to do that. Now, I know that that's very um, anti-feminist and conservative. I go back and forth. I can see both sides of it. But there, I have an instinctive reaction to it. And exactly like you said, there was none of that last night. Rihanna put on a performance that was befitting of a mother. I have to say, like, it just, it was the first thing that stood out. She was very modestly attired. She was totally covered. Um, you could see that, you know, it was either, I couldn't tell initially if it was a postpartum body or if she was actually pregnant, but either way, it was beautiful to see. And she, it was very dignified. There was really, it was such a strong contrast to um, the Sam Smith performance in which he was um, dressed as the devil and be, you know, the extremely sexual performance from the Grammys a week ago. Um, it was just, it seemed like an extremely dignified performance. And I, I, I kept thinking, this is what happens when a woman mm-hmm. has a baby and she wants her child to be able to watch the performance. I, I completely agree with your assessment. You know, I, I can't imagine what conservatives would have objected to there was just she barely even danced she was mostly just singing and you know like I said modestly clad and then all of these dancers around her so I I loved it I thought it was great I thought she looked like a a millionaire billionaire like that's exactly what's supposed to happen you know you can you can move up the ladder and then you know um Anyway, I know this is a, a very uh, a hot take and a controversial take, but I completely agree with you, I, and I think it was uh, it was a beautiful performance. Yeah, it really let the choreography, which I, it was fantastic, it was, it was really yeah. showed off because there was nothing, you know, d- deliberately like provoking to try to stand out, which was contrasting with yeah the other performance um, you highlighted. You know, you don't need to always go like so over the top or something like that. I really enjoyed it, and and most people seem to enjoy the. Um, you know, I was checking social media, I saw a lot of praise for it from again from it was not it didn't seem to fall into like a like right people hated it and and liberals liked it it seemed like you know most people most people liked it i i like the whole as i'm getting older bacha i don't i see how you feel about this i i'm starting to appreciate you know i'm not a, i'm not a big sports person i did watch almost the entire sports uh the entire super bowl i thought it was a great game uh, i am i am be- coming to appreciate more as like our generation becomes 
like the old generation <laughs> is that things that are the Super Bowl you know, is watched by older people. People, I, I don't know how interest, interested Gen Z is in even like the concept of TV to begin with. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the ads and a lot of the cultural aspects of it are actually playing to people of our age and older. Um, it, it, as apart from a lot of what I see in like the YouTube ecosystem, so it's kind of, it's kind of nice to be pandered to every now and then. I don't know how much longer it will last, <laughs> but but uh, probably at the Super Bowl we have a, a couple more years of it at least. <laughs> I, I there were two ads that rubbed me the wrong way. Um, I, I mean, so a lot of them were really moving. Um, the one about the, the the dying dog. I think we are all in agreement that that was. That was a war crime, and and uh, you know the <laughs> should not have been shown. But um, the, there was there were two in which celebrity in which celebrity actors were play acting at having working class jobs. In one, Bradley Cooper was pretending to work for T-Mobile, and the other one, Ben Affleck was Ben Affleck was working at a Dunkin' Donuts, mm -hmm. and you know serving people. And then um, J Lo pulls up in her car, and she says to him, "Is this what you've been doing when you tell me you're going to work?" You know, in this outrage. Mm -hmm. I felt that, that that really did rub me the wrong way. Like these these jobs aren't jokes for, you know, billionaires. You know what I mean? Like that is work. And that would be dignified work if it was, you know, paid a living wage. And so to 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 make jest of that as though this is something we should be mocking. I know I'm taking it too seriously. It's just an ad. They just wanted to get, you know, Ben Affleck's name under Dunkin' Donuts and show his, you know, approval of the brand or whatever. But it, it really did rub me the wrong way. Like why like it's not a joke. Like there's, there's, you know, three million people who work in, um, who are, who are cashiers who do that job in America, and we should treat them with respect. And there was something about it that, not him pretending to be one so much as the response she had. Like, of course, she would never dream of being in a relationship with somebody like that one. Like, why not? Like, she's already so rich. She. She's she's the first person in America who could afford to to marry somebody who works at Dunkin Donuts. So that rubbed me a little bit the wrong mm. way. But, um, you know, it's it, what's fun about it, Robbie, for me is watching something that, you know, so many other Americans are watching. Like there's something about that that's really moving and it makes you feel connected to people, even though I have to admit I I did veer away from I did watch other things during the sports parts because I don't really understand the rules of football. <laughs> um, and no matter how many times people explain it to me, it's gone the next time it comes on. But, I, you know, being engaged in something that so many of your fellow Americans are doing, like it feels good. Mm. My favorite ad was probably, unsurprisingly, the uh, the Matrix style fight between the representatives of the two beer companies, and yes, that I, I, was great. just because I like Matrix style fighting. <laughs> All right, those great. are our takes, and we'll have more rising for you right after this. Please stay with us. <laughs> 